As Ashok mentioned, my name is Mike Lee Kunda. I'm a graduate student in the Design and Intelligence Lab here at Georgia Tech. Um, and intelligence um, is a concept that for as many disciplines um, as we have experience with, uh, everyone seems to have their own definition. I'll talk about one definition right now um, from the field of psychometrics, which has to do with measuring intelligence. Um, in psychometrics, uh, there's a notion that intelligence can be divided into two types. There's general intelligence, uh, often abbreviated as G, or the G factor, which lies at the center of all of our cognitive abilities. Um, and then this is in contrast to specific intelligences, um, which are domain or task-specific cognitive abilities that are very narrow and, and focused on one task or one ability. From the field of psychometrics, um, we've gotten lots of different types of tasks that tax different cognitive abilities. Um, and on a chart like this, you can see there's different domains of abilities. There's numerical abilities, verbal abilities, and figural abilities, uh, figural or visual. And um, there are lots of different tasks. Um, as they move, tasks move in from the periphery to the center, they grow more and more general. So the tasks toward the outside are very specific and narrow tasks, but as we move closer to the center, uh, we come across tasks that are closer um, to measuring our general intelligence or what we think of as general intelligence. It turns out that there's one kind of special task um, in the psychology literature um, that more than any other single task serves as a proxy for measuring general intelligence. So most of these tasks um, you would only be able to determine a person's numerical ability or visual ability. But there's this one task called the Raven's Progressive Matrices, um, which gives a very good proxy for general IQ. Um, it was actually originally developed in the 1920s and 30s as sort of a quick and dirty IQ measure. And it consists of problems that look like... So here's a very simple example of a Raven's Progressive Matrix problem. The task is to look at the matrix on top, um, see what element is missing, and choose the best fit answer from the choices. So any ideas on what the answer to this one? Five. Yes, five. I heard five. That is correct. Um, the problems get a bit more complex. On this one, any guesses? You can be wrong. It's okay. Three. I heard a couple of votes for three. That is correct. So it turns out that solving problems like this is a very good measure of a person's general intelligence. Um, we, in cognitive science, we have studied how it is that people can solve problems like this. And it turns out that there have been several computational models of how people solve the Ravens test that have been developed over the last couple of decades. Yep. And interestingly, almost every single one of these models assumes a verbal solution strategy in which we're taking the inputs from the test, which are visual, converting them into verbal symbols and labels that are discrete um, and really lose the inherent visuospatial information from the problem, but still retain enough information about the relationships to successfully solve the problem. In our lab, we have been looking at a different type of strategy for solving this kind of test, which is saying, can we throw away that verbal conversion completely and reason directly on the visual inputs from the test. When you think about visual uh, versus verbal reasoning, in verbal reasoning, there's lots of really well-studied techniques like using logical operations or rule-based systems. But visual reasoning also has some standard mechanisms for manipulating images that we can draw upon. I'm going to go over a couple of examples of these now. So affine transformations are a very basic form of image manipulation that include things like translation, rotation, and scaling. And while it's not clear that humans actually do these exact operations in our heads, there has been a lot of evidence from neuroscience and psychology showing that we can do operations that are computationally isomorphic in some sense. So when we're mentally rotating an image, for example, the time it takes for us to mentally rotate the image is proportional to the distance that we're having to rotate it. Um, another type of image operation is composition. So you can think about if you have two different images, um, you can combine them and look at the similarities and differences between the images in various ways. So we can combine two images by taking their union. Uh, we can look at their intersection or what is shared between the two images. 
We can also look at differences between the two images. So what is in one image but not in the other? And this type of image composition operation is useful not only for combining images but also for looking at image similarity because we can look at for two images what is shared versus what is different. Using these principles, we've come up with a model for solving uh, problems from the Ravens test. And it works something like this. Essentially, given a Ravens problem, the model has in memory a set of these affine transformations. It'll take the top row, for example, it works on columns also, um, and it'll test each of these affine transformations to find some transformation that explains what it's seeing in the top row or the leftmost column. When it finds one that seems to work, It'll apply that transformation to the empty row or column to generate a guess for what it thinks the answer is. And then it'll choose, using the visual similarity measure um, I mentioned, it'll choose the most similar answer as its, um, as its answer choice. So we've tested this model against the entirety of the standard progressive matrices, which is the normal Ravens test, the most widely used one. And I have um, some results here. So this graph shows the norms for human children in the US, just to orient you a little bit. The x-axis here shows the age of kids in years. The y-axis shows their score on the test, which has a total of 60 problems. And the white line in the middle is the 50th percentile, so average performance. So an average six-year-old will get about 14 problems correct. An average 18-year-old will get closer to 50, 52 problems. Our model right now, using purely visual operations on the test inputs, gets 38 correct on the test out of 60. Uh, which corresponds to a level of about an average 10 or 11 year old. Um, which we think is pretty interesting given that we're taking raw scans from the test and using only these types of visual operations to operate over these uh, problem inputs. So to conclude, um, what we have been finding about cognition, so for a long time uh, conventional theories of cognition have looked something like this where visual processing uh, and perception is m merely a means for getting input into the system and once that input is in the system, it's converted into some kind of verbal symbols or labels. And then verbal processing is where the real intelligence lies. What we've been finding is that actually visual processing itself um, can play a role in the kinds of higher level cognition that we think of as forming the basis of uh, even general intelligence. <laughs>